Free Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. It sounds like something out of 1984, but unfortunately, it's real. Former Democratic Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, who's now a cable news commentator for Fox, was persistently harassed by extra security guards while flying throughout the country. The reason? She was recently targeted by Quiet Skies, an Orwellian TSA program that costs hundreds of millions of dollars and routinely violates the civil liberties of innocent Americans. Here's Gabbard describing what happened to her. Laura, this is a clear act of political retaliation. There's no other way to put it. You laid out the sequence of events the very next day after my conversation with you on the air warning the American people about how dangerous a Kamala Harris presidency would be. I was placed on this domestic terror watch list, which is called the Quiet Skies List under the Department of Homeland Security. The, the clear uh, pain and, and, and real visceral hurt that comes from this is, as you mentioned, like many Americans, I enlisted because of the terrorist attacks on 9-11, to go after the Islamist the ter terrorists who attacked us on that day, and to now have my own government now turn around and put me on a domestic terror watch list, uh, it, it, is, it, it hits to the core and, and is the ultimate sense of betrayal, but, but we look at why they are doing this. It has a chilling effect. So this program is crazy. Um, just to you know, clarify, Tulsi Gabbard is not the first or only person to be a victim of it. She's just the most high profile and has come forward. And a whistleblower came forward and spoke to uh, Matt Taibbi, uh, independent journalist, who we actually interviewed on Rising this week. And viewers can go check that out if they want to hear more details from the horse's mouth. It is crazy. Um, so this is almost like the no-fly list. It's separate from that. Some people traveling, doing air travel throughout the country are subjected to extra scrutiny and they'll basically have teams of security agents just kind of following you and then they'll have an extra marshal on the plane with you. There will be drug sniffing dogs. They did this to Tulsi. Extra, um, uh, you know, pat down, like really aggressive patting downs. The pat downs are already getting plenty aggressive at the Ronald Reagan airport in DC, I have to say. Um, <laughs> you know, going over everything and uh, on your Boarding pass, this happens to some people, there'll be four S's. It stands for like some kind of extra security measure mm -hmm. something. Um, and it's not explained how you get on the list. It's not explained how you get off it. A, a past whistleblower came forward because he found out that his wife was on it. And he had no idea why. Uh, it's crazy. We don't know what she did or what anyone did to get put on it. There's no evidence. Again, they've never, of course, they've never... Um, apprehended a terrorist this way. Like, they're not even, like, if, if these people were legitimate safety threats, they wouldn't let them fly at all, right? This is just quiet sky. I mean, it sounds crazy. It's real. It is crazy. And I have very little doubt that this is not about the fact that uh, Tulsi Gabbard has run afoul of the political establishment, that the Democratic Party hates her for defecting, that yeah. Hillary Clinton herself accused Tulsi Gabbard of being a Russian plant yeah. who was uh, trying to uh, infiltrate the U.S. government to destroy it from the inside on behalf of the Russians. I mean, all of these misinformation, we go back to that term, misinformation narratives coming from the Democrats being used to silence their political opponents. and. You know, earlier in the show, we were talking about the fact that the EU and European countries have been cracking down on speech there and how grateful we are to have the protections of the First Amendment. But this is an important reminder that yeah. they will get you in other ways. That's true. If they can't straight up arrest you for sending a tweet, um, which they, I'm sure they do that too because they'll claim you were inciting violence or whatever. Um, there is that one, I can't think of his name, there is that one guy being prosecuted for- Oh, well um, they got Douglas Mackey because, yes, yeah, yeah, because, for, because right, he made a joke. Election misinformation. Yeah, because he, yeah, cause he yes. made a joke meme about voting on the wrong day. It was a joke, like, Democrats on the wrong day, vote on the wrong day. Which yeah. Demo I've, I've seen yeah. the same thing come from the Democrats a million times and yep, he actually served jail time for that. Um, so yeah, they'll find a way to get you if they want to get you. Yeah. They, they'll just wriggle their way around the First Amendment and make sure that they can take you out. I, uh, myself, and colleagues of mine at Reason have written a lot about just how 
awful the TSA is as an organization and how this is this is all safety theater. Um, it is not make you know, locking the cockpit doors made planes safer. That was the great innovation after 9-11. That, <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah, well, and don't it's let the plane amazing. get taken off. It's amazing it took us that long to figure that well, out. Well, I mean, it used to be policy, and we forget this, right. but there were, a, there were a tons of hijackings of planes every year for decades because the people hijacking them were um, Cuban sympathizing people who would hijack the plane, take it to Cuba, get off the plane, and get arrested by Cuban authorities. So they didn't make, you know, you're getting a, a, a detour. It didn't make sense to fight the hijackers. Then hijackers flew the planes into um, sensitive places. And so now nobody's gonna let that happen again. You don't need to monitor people for making sure their liquids are only this big before they get on a plane. It's so ridiculous, it's so wasteful, um, it, it, it costs, just an exorbitant amount of money to do this. It's inconvenient for travelers because people have to get to the airport so much earlier. People choose to drive instead of fly because flying has been made much so much more inconvenient, even though driving is about a, about a gazillion times, that's literal math, gazillion times more dangerous than flying. Um, and slower. And slower. It's, it's so bad, and I've wanted this. I've made a, a promise that, you know, I'm not going to vote for Republicans or Democrats basically ever, but I will... I will commit, I will be for life, I will be for Trump, for Harris, for whoever abolishes TSA first. That's my, I, my vote can be won on that basis alone. It is incredible. I'll swallow the rest of the policies, I will. I think everybody who's flown more than a, like a handful of times yeah. has an insane TSA story. Yeah. Actually, my first time flying as an adult, I was going with some friends in college on spring break and we got rerouted through LaGuardia and I had no idea that there is this like security area that you have to stay in, otherwise you have to go through the screening again. I literally took one step past the sign and they would not let me go back into yep. the area to go with my friends who were all waiting for me to go board our connection flight. I had to go back through security. As I'm going through security, they pull out my half empty tube of toothpaste and start like feeling it up <laughs> and then they throw it Squeezing away. Squeezing it yeah, out. Yeah, get really into oh, it, determining God. that it was too full. They threw it away. I've also been groped in some of those random security screenings, which is very violating by the way. Like. The fact that they are allowed to do that is actually it's despicable. Crazy. I have like PTSD from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's horrible. And then you have to pay $60 or however much to TSA Pre for the pleasure of not having to take your shoes off. Cause that's how we're sneaking bombs in through shoes or whatever. I don't even know why that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, you have to pay the government more money and go to a little screening facility for them to run your ID, which they already run anytime you board a plane or buy a plane ticket anyway, so that you can prove that you're not a terrorist well, and go through the fast line. And they've started taking, I don't know if they do this for pre-check. I don't have pre-check, I use clear. Uh, Pre-check is clearly better, by the way, but it's great. I use clear, so you still have to do that part, you just skip the first line. But now they've started making everyone, clear people included, they take your photo. Have, have you oh, noticed yeah, this? I they opt the out. photo and then they delete that yeah, and they're like, no, they I don't delete, delete it. it. Bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, it's I in the it's that. in a cloud somewhere. Now I I always opt out of the TSA mm. pre photo. That's my most libertarian thing that I do is I refuse to have my photo taken at the airport. And sure, I'm on all the other cameras, but it's the principle of the matter. You do not get my consent. You're in the right place, Amber. <laughs> That's why we wanted to involve you in this project. All right, Quiet Skies. Oh, God, even the name Disgusting. sounds like something out Quiet of a. Skies science fiction um, sort of deal. Uh, all right, thank you for watching Free Media this week. We'll be back next week with more content, and you can like, share, and subscribe below.